We came up with the name Hidden Histories of San Jose Japantown because it was very apparent a lot of people don't know the history of that community and that it wasn't just about Japanese American history, but it involved two other communities, including the Chinese Americans and Filipino Americans. Japantown, where it exists now, actually was established on a place that uh, Chinatown existed in San Jose before, and, and not a lot of people know that. Filipinos had a very active and vibrant community also in Japantown. So it's actually a place shared by these three communities. And we wanted to bring that history alive for people and get them to really think more about why Japantown is such a special place. The exciting thing was the idea that we could bring in artists to really invigorate the way that people look at our community. We felt that artistic visions of both the history of San Jose, Japantown, the relationships between the different communities, and the way the place used to look, the way people used to feel, that this would be really exciting and inspiring to our entire community and our broader community, the Chinese American, the Filipino American, as well as the Japanese American communities. We really specifically did community building with art and technology. And the what that meant in real life was people telling stories and then other people uh, helping them figure out how to tell the story in different ways. And, and that part, you know, that um, mixing of the person with the memory and people uh, with the art and people with the technology and, and brainstorming that whole process that that's community building.
I'd like to promote a term that I'm coining <laughs> called uh, liberation technology. I think that um, a lot of times people talk about technology like it's, you know, outside of human experience. It's like above us. It's smarter. The technology is smarter than us. But I think that um, one of the things that we learned from Tomiko is that, you know, uh, augmented reality technology is usually used by a profit making corporation to commoditize the technology into something that's prepackaged, um, that's produced by focus groups in order to sell it to you. And you just buy it and it's a kind of a passive process. And I want to call it liberation technology because um, this was something that, uh, you know, older community artists were able to expand their artistic horizons by learning how to use it by learning how to think in that um, and create in that context. And it was something that uh, younger uh, artists were able to uh, connect with the community without having to go work for a game, video game company you know, to get access to the technology, you know? And so, and, and I think it also allowed us to uh, show it to people in the community who may either fear or, feel you know turned off by technology and to show them that it could really be in the service of uh, connecting people. Now this is Dr. Tokyo Ishikawa. I was born on Jackson Street in 1909, and I've lived in San Jose all my life. I've, in fact, I've lived in Japantown all my life. Except Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Facebook uh, live stream. So for today's live stream, it's uh, episode three of the Hidden Histories. Originally, we planned uh, the Hidden Histories project, this uh, education about history and the stories as well as the technology to take place in person. We, we were gonna have community meetings. We were gonna have meetings between Tamiko Thiel, uh, the, uh, our artist advisor and the artists. We we're gonna have hands-on uh, trainings and we we're gonna have uh, uh, walking tours and events right in Japantown where all of the artists would congregate and uh, the community could see what we were doing. Yeah. But the pandemic uh, kind of blew a hole in that plan. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming and I hope everybody's been able to get to the um, AR Poise tutorial as well as the uh, AR Voss tutorial and the part of the video AR I'm going to show you how it. to import a pattern, a drawing, or a photo and apply it to a 3D object. So we're going to so go up into here. the top panel here um, and I can apply object. it to um, my different objects here. So I'm going to drag it onto the plane and now you can see it. That image is now affixed to the front of that plane. interesting way to get your history. I think we accomplished what we set out to do for the grant, and that is to experiment with immersive technology 
And I think what we did do is show that augmented reality technology using art is possible to do for our small grassroots operation with uh, little resources to help explore a, a different way of educating the public about the history of a particular community and area and to make new connections for a museum and to open up all sorts of opportunities for the future and that it's doable. And I'm very proud that we can talk more about all of the things that kind of came together to make this possible. But, but I am proud that we were able to do this and show that other communities hopefully will be inspired to do the same thing with even small amounts of resources. But just as long as you have the right community spirit and are willing to try new things, I feel very good about what we were able to accomplish.